to god be the glory great things he has done our father we exalt your name give you all the glory give you praise and give you every adoration from the depths of our hearts we thank you for the gift of today and we thank you for grace and mercy so fresh and we thank you for the way that you have prepared for us enlighten us empower us even by your word and grant us the grace to meditate until your word is rooted and grounded in us we also ask for grace to share this word with all the people within our circles and may we be a light and a light bearer even unto them as we share our your word with them May your name forever be praised. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. The love in the Lord, you're welcome once again to my Zion daily devotion, where God always has a word, a fresh word, from the ovens of heaven for his people. We are making progress on our team, Divine Advantage. And remember, the Lord shared with us a message on our redemptive inheritance. And the first one was power. The second was wealth. The third, wisdom. The fourth, strength. The fifth, honor. The sixth, glory. And the seventh, blessing. Or praise as we find in the new international version and this can be found in revelation chapter 5 verse 12 where it is written worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth wisdom and strength honor and glory and blessings and so we wanted to delve into power how jesus is death and resurrection had received or purchased power or redeemed power unto his people and that took us a whole lot and today we only continue and we are continuing with wisdom that jesus was slain to receive wisdom for us by his death he paid the full price of wisdom unto us and we explained the other time that this were the attributes that were found in the first man, the first person that God created, Adam. Adam was full of power. He was full of wisdom. He was a wealthy man. The whole world belonged to him. He was put under his stewardship. He owned everything. He was a wealthy man. He had strength. He was not meant to... to to get weak he was not meant to die he had honor he had glory and he was absolutely blessed and he lost it through the fall but jesus came to die to restore this unto us amen and therefore by our divine advantage we possess all this redemptive inheritance legally jesus had paid a price for their restoration unto us so every believer is supposed to be a person of power of wealth has the ability to create wealth supposed to be a person full of divine wisdom strength honor glory and blessings that is what the book says and that is what it is the rest depend on us to journey and labor through the word of god to come to this place so that this legal inheritance will become a reality and that is why we study the word that is why we meditate on the word so that the word become implanted in our spirit once it is implanted it will begin to bear the fruit of the word. Amen. So this is the reality 
of our life. And today we are talking about wisdom. I will just do an introduction. Then maybe in our next session we get deeper into wisdom. Proverbs 20 says, Proverbs chapter 2 verse 6, sorry, says that for the Lord gives wisdom, the Lord, from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. The Lord gives wisdom. Our Father is a giver of wisdom. And this wisdom we are talking about flows from him to his children. He gives. He gives wisdom. So therefore, Apostle James said in James chapter 1, verse 5, that if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God because he gives. And for us, wisdom has been opened unto us. Jesus has paid the full price for us to receive the wisdom of God. So if we lack it, we can ask. Because the Father gives anything God gives, you can ask for. Did you hear that? Anything God gives, we can ask for. In Proverbs 2 says, says that the Lord gives wisdom. And James is telling us that therefore, we, if we lack it, we should ask God. And he says, who gives generously to all without finding fault? And it will be given to you. Ah, what a word. He says, when you ask for wisdom from the Father, he will give to us because he gives generously to all without finding fault. And the wisdom will be given unto us. This is so because Jesus has fully paid the price for our wisdom. He has. And therefore we can go to the Father and ask. And he will give unto us. Amen. In Proverbs 9, chapter 9, verse 10, also throw some more light. He says, for us to receive God's wisdom, it begins with our fear. Our fear for him. And here he's not talking about destructive fear. He's talking about reverential fear. The way you reverence God and hold him in high esteem, open the door for you to receive his divine wisdom. That's what he's saying. So Proverbs 9, 10 says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. When you seek knowledge of the Holy One, when you read your Bible, try to seek knowledge of the Holy One, your understanding will be opened up. Our father, Miles Moro, tells a story about how he wasn't too good in school. You know, he, was, he wasn't too good in school. But his mother introduced him to the reading of the Bible. And he says he just started reading Bible. Reading. He was reading as a, a little child. Reading. Just reading. <laughs> and whilst he was reading and reading and reading, he found out that his mental capacity was increasing. And he could understand the things he didn't understand in class some time back. And long story short, he came on top of the class. According to him, that's how he earned scholarship to go to college in, in, in the United States of America. He used to live in the Bahamas. And the Bible says that the knowledge of the Holy One, when you try to seek the knowledge of the Holy One, it opens up your understanding. It opens up. That's the bonus you get when you come close to God's word. It opens up your understanding. And it's simple. The Holy Spirit who will open your understanding for you to understand the scriptures is the same Holy Spirit who will open your understanding for you to understand anything anything you read anything you want to understand so when you build that fellowship with him he is always with you anytime you seek any other knowledge he will give you understanding Amen and that is not our topic our topic is that or our concern is that reverential fear for the Lord will bring you to the arena of his wisdom. And therefore, when you are asking for wisdom, you must add the fear. If you have the character of the fear of the Lord, it makes it easy for you to attain God's wisdom. Amen. 
And it even gets better for us who are in Christ, who are believing Him, believing His finished work. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, that it is because of Him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. <laughs> so for us, a Christ who lives in us, He has become for us the wisdom of God, God Christ. Inside Christ is his wisdom. is the embodiment of God's wisdom. Christ is God's wisdom. So when Christ is in you, then you have his wisdom. So Jesus Christ has become for us wisdom from God. And that is our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemption. Christ is our righteousness, is our holiness, is our redemption and he's also our wisdom so when you have christ you have god's wisdom it's a potential it's like a, it's like power it's in you it's up to you to harness this wisdom and you do that the more of his word the knowledge of him that you have the more of this wisdom that is unveiled unpackaged unto you for for us we have access to wisdom from the Father by asking. But it even gets better. The potential for wisdom is domiciled in us. Christ in us. Christ has become our wisdom. If you find Christ, you find God's wisdom. So for every believer inside you is the wisdom of God. The rest of the deal is how to unpackage this wisdom. And it comes when you live in the fear of the Lord, and when you also continue to eat God's word, God's word is his wisdom. The more you eat, the more of his wisdom that is unveiled and unpackaged unto you, and your life will become full of wisdom. Amen. Apostle James tried to differentiate the wisdom that comes from above, the wisdom of God from the wisdom of this world. In James chapter 3, reading from verse 13, he says that who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. <laughs> so if you want to know a person who has this wisdom we are talking about, he says you find them in the way they live. They show goodness. They show humility. For goodness and humility flow from the wisdom of God. And in verse 14, he says that, But if you, you find anybody who harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in their hearts, that person <laughs> is not a person who has the wisdom of God. And that person should not boast about it, nor deny the truth that they lack God's wisdom. Because they are exhibiting a different kind of wisdom. So the verse 15 says, Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but it is earthly. Okay? So people who walk in bitter envy, selfish ambition, and they boast about such things and they are full of pride and arrogance. They are not wise. They are expressing a certain type of wisdom. And the verse 15 says that that's, that wisdom does not come from heaven. It is earthly. It is an expression of earthly wisdom. And since that wisdom is not just earthly, it is unspiritual. It's not coming from the Holy Spirit. And says that wisdom is demonic. <laughs> it's Satan kind of wisdom. Arrogance, pride, selfish ambition, bitter envy, jealousy. They are the expressions of Satan's own form of wisdom. And if any such is manifesting in you, go on your knees, ask for forgiveness, ask that the Lord heals you and take those demonic, unspiritual, and earthly 
wisdom <laughs> from your heart. Hmm? If the wisdom that you have helps you to steal from your employers, helps you to add some zeros, change some figures, that is not wisdom. The world call it smartness. The Bible call it demonic, unspiritual, earthly wisdom. And you need deliverance. And this morning I speak deliverance into your life. May the Lord deliver you from tiffly, from corruption, and from all this kind of evil smartness called the wisdom of this world. Hey, he says, for where there, there is selfish ambition, there you find this order and every evil practice. And these are all founded on worldly wisdom, earthly wisdom which is demonic and unspiritual, according to Apostle James. Then he tells us that in verse 17, he said, but the wisdom that comes from heaven, godly wisdom, the wisdom that we are talking about, is first of all pure. There is purity in it. Then it is peace-loving. And you find a peaceful person. He's not stupid. He's wise. The one you harass and you don't say anything. He's not stupid. He's wise. He said the wisdom that comes from above is pure. Pure. No contamination, no corruption. Pure. Has a pure heart. Has a pure soul. Has a pure disposition. He does not flow with the evil people. So such a person is peace-loving. One who has the wisdom of God. He's considerate. He's no chuncha. He's considerate. Hmm? He's submissive. He's full of mercy and good fruit. He's impartial and sincere. These are the expressions of godly wisdom. When you find a person who is sincere, he is a wise person. And that wisdom is not from the world. It's not earthly. It is a wisdom from above. If you find a person who is impartial, he has is expressing godly wisdom. A person who bears good fruits. Hmm. A person who is full of mercy, submissive considerate, peace-loving, and very pure. There's no corruption in such a person. These are the attributes of wise people, people who are living by the wisdom of God. Child of God, I pray that this become your portion. But the summary of it all is that Jesus has purchased, paid for the wisdom of God for us. It's up to us to ask God. He said, when we ask, he will give it to us generously. It is up to us to receive because Christ himself has become our wisdom. And there's a difference between, between the wisdom of God, the wisdom that comes from heaven, and the wisdom of this world, which is self, based on selfish ambition, based on envy and jealousy, based on all kinds of things that are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Therefore, we must watch out. If the wisdom of God in us, it will show in our life of purity. It will show in a life of peace-loving. It will be peace-loving people to show in our life of being considerate, be flexible, <laughs> being submissive, being full of mercy, being people of good fruit, bearing good fruit, being impartial, and you also be sincere. Apart from all the advantages that Wisdom gives to us. This will also be shown in our lives. And our life will be like Christ. Because He is our wisdom.
May the Lord bless you as you meditate on this. And the more you meditate, the more the wisdom of God will be demonstrated in your life. The more you meditate, the more wisdom of God will be unpackaged. And in our next session, we will throw more light on wisdom. The Lord bless you. If anybody has listened to us and you do not know this Jesus, who has become our wisdom, <laughs> who paid the price for us to receive back a wisdom that Adam lost. Adam has so much wisdom, he could name anything that God has created, any animal. And God affirmed it. But when he fell, he lost that wisdom. He didn't even know how to cover himself. The Bible says he used leaves. How much would leaves last as a covering? And God showed him wisdom. God killed a lamp and used the skin to cover him. So it tells, it tells, it tells you that Adam lost it. He lost it. <laughs> he lost wisdom. He lost all things, including wisdom. And if you want to gain this wisdom back, you need to receive Jesus. Who oh, forgive you your sins, get you born again, and fill you with his wisdom. Pray this prayer with us. Say, Dear Jesus, today I reckon I'm a sinner and I repent of my sins. I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior. For I believe that you died for my sins and you were raised for my justification. Beloved, if you pray this prayer sincerely, you are born again. Your dead spirit has been regenerated by the Holy Spirit. And you have been brought into the family of God. Please find a Bible believing church in your community. Let them baptize you into the body of Christ. And also let them grant you discipleship tutelage so that you grow and become a great child of God, full of the wisdom of God. The Lord bless you for receiving Jesus today. Amen. Beloved, shalom and peace and life to you as you walk in divine wisdom. Amen.